Our K1 has been sitting bricked for a while now, and we finally got the time to work on it. We sent a message to Creality explaining the issue, and they sent back this link with a guide on how to manually recover the firmware on the motherboard. It is pretty thorough and works great, but there are some issues for our particular issue, which we'll discuss later. First, we'll need to access the motherboard on the bottom of the printer. We'll need to take off the bottom panel, but before we set the printer on its side, go ahead and tape the door closed. This just takes away any possibility of the door swinging open and shattering while you're working on it. which would obviously not be ideal. Then we flip the printer on its side and start unscrewing the two bolts on the panel and the four bolts in the rubber feet in each corner. Be careful when taking that panel off as the fan is on there and is connected to the motherboard. Next, just as good practice, you'll want to take a picture that shows how exactly where every cable is connected for reference. There is a great picture explaining where every cable connects at the bottom of the tutorial as well. Now, if you haven't done this before to your K1 or K1 Max, you'll probably have to take some glue off the connectors first, and then we're ready to unplug everything. Once you have everything unplugged, unscrew the four bolts holding the motherboard in and take it out of the printer. Now, back at the computer, you'll want to click the link at the top of the page Creality sent and download the driver and burning tool. Then, one thing that's not mentioned on this page, you will also need to go to this GitHub page here, which there is a link in the description. You will need to download the ingenic file at the bottom of the page. This is just the file that you will need to burn onto the motherboard. Then, you're ready to follow the guide Creality sent. Plug in the motherboard to the computer, and then you should see two blue lights come on. One should stay lit while the other blinks. Now we're going to reset the board by pressing and holding both the reset button and the boot button at the same time. Hold it for 3 seconds and then let go of the reset button first, then the boot button. The light that was blinking should now be a constant dim blue. If it's not, try again and make sure that you're letting go of the reset button first and then the boot button. Once that is reset, head back to the computer and go to your device manager. You should find Ingenic USB boot device with a warning sign next to it. If you don't see a warning sign, you may have the wrong type of cord. You might be using a micro USB that is strictly for charging, and we need a micro USB that can transfer both power supply and communication. If you do see the warning sign, right click the Ingenic USB boot device and click update driver. Find the cloner win32 drive file and click next. Once that's installed, open that alpha folder and find the cloner application. At this point, the tutorial on GitHub points to the wrong application to open. It says to click the file labeled core, but we need to double click the one titled cloner so we can open the proper tool. Once that's open, click load image, find your Ingenic file and click open. Then click start and we will need to reset the board again following the same instructions as before. Press and hold both buttons at the same time, then release the reset button first and then the boot button. After it resets, it will automatically start progress bar on the burning tool. When it's finished, that blue light will start blinking again, and now you can unplug from the computer and put the motherboard back in the printer. Screw the motherboard back in with those four bolts and then you're ready to start plugging everything back in. Follow the picture you took earlier or the one provided on the guide that we've been using. Make sure everything is connected securely with no loose cables and then we're ready to put the panel back on. Connect the fan and screw the panel in place and put the feet back on. Now you should be able to plug your printer in and turn it on. At this point you will have to set up your printer just like it's the first time out of the box, selecting language, connecting to Wi-Fi, and running all the self-tests. We printed the 16 minute Benchy that comes on the local drive and everything seems to be running fine. We ordered the K1 back when it was on pre-order and it's definitely had its issues. The extruder we initially received with the K1 had problems getting proper pressure and contact contact on the filament, causing under extrusion. The original thermistor wires were so thin and easy to snap that we probably did it every time we changed the nozzle. But Creality has worked on those issues and even sent out a power boost kit a while back that had a new version of their extruder, a camera to stick in the print chamber, and a new hot end with a more robust thermistor wire and ceramic heater. After these upgrades, everything has been running fantastic, and aside from the random bricking which we still don't know what causes it, we haven't had any issues. We really like this printer, even through all the headaches that it's given us, and we're glad it's up and running again and props to Creality for fixing all those bugs. I hope this video helped. Go ahead and follow or subscribe so you can keep up with future guides.